Last time I was here, I walked down. I, the conditions weren't perfect, so I ended up turning around and walking away. You know, Mike doesn't turn around for many things, so knowing that he turned around on it, it must be a visual trip. Will be too proud to turn around? I'm hoping it looks a little better than it did last time. <laughs> Here we are in uh, Chamonix. Well, Chamonix is in France. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I really don't have a ton to tell you besides this is one of the most magical places I've ever visited. As corny as it sounds, it's the birthplace of the word extreme. And whether it's rock climbers, skiers, now wingsuiting and speed flying and everything in the middle, you know, it's people that are taking the next step in any of those type of sports. This place is insane. I mean, look around. We're standing on a glacier in the middle of nowhere. The plan is we're going to get out. We'll fly towards this peak here, and then we'll arc out towards the center. If we have any extra altitude, we'll do a couple zigzags. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. Day on the glacier. And it's, it's a place that feeds the animal. Too much to take in, then you look over, Swanson's all on his back, smiling, not a care in the world. We're trying out a few suits from Squirrel. We started off with the Freaks this morning, and now we're working with the, the Swift Twos and the Funk Twos, just playing over some uh, beautiful scenery. What we're doing here is, is really very different from skydiving, even though in principle it's the same. It's so much more intense. It doesn't matter how much experience or skills you have in the traditional skydiving environment, when you come here and you put on that single parachute system, no backup, you get out of the helicopter at 15,000 feet over 14,000 foot peaks, you know, you're never that far from terrain, even when you're at exit altitude. You're in a super narrow valley with very threatening and hostile terrain on all sides. It gets pretty intense really fast. It's not like you can just relax and pretend you're skydiving. You're sort of tripping out on the intensity of it the whole time. We're lucky. There's not a lot of people that get the permission that we got to come out here and uh, and set up a base camp here on the glacier and, uh, and rage. Yeah, buddy. There's nothing like jumping off of Earth, you know, and just like going from the zero into acceleration and flying. There's nothing like it, you know, but for the longevity, <laughs> things of that nature, it's been a while since John base jumped with the wingsuit, for sure. Like, the hardest part is the step off. Everything's running through your mind, like your perfect exit. Because that step off, it's one sequence of that no feeling to feeling, did I do everything right, there it is, back home, here I am. Like, the second you feel it, you know, it's like, I know where I'm at. 
and I think Mike Swanson was also uh, pretty keen to get a warm up in. We showed up to this massive cliff and uh, it was a nice right flight. We got off the wall and then you could turn right and um, fly down the wall for a second. There were some trees you could play with. So it was a good confidence booster to go out there. Once I'm flying, I, you know, my confidence level goes through the roof because I know where I'm at. Definitely not like riding a bike, but for these guys, it's kind of like riding a bike. So those 40 foot tall inflatable pylons are meant to be kind of gate for some slalom flying with our wingsuits. So now that the wingsuits have developed to the point where they are now, it's there's no truer form of human flight. I guess the concept of flying wingsuits around slalom gates down the side of a mountain sounds pretty crazy. It's taken the naked body, given it more power to, to give it more freedom. The idea is to have a physical object to fly around because that's fun. And it's 100% you know, human body piloting. And we're showing that by being able to fly feet off the ground in a super controlled way. Yeah, this is a different, definitely gives a different perspective. Yeah, I'll try to just remember this and then close yeah. my eyes till I exit. <laughs> <laughs> the trickiest part of today. Just remember wow. this picture and don't look down. <laughs> just walk out there. Getting up to the top obviously was just a lot of mind games going to, you know, reprocessing all the stories I was told about the place. The first thing on my mind was that cornice. And all I heard about since I've been here is that cornice is gonna go at any moment. And anybody on the exit point when that happens is done. I'm not super current. I, uh, have a, I did a jump yesterday to warm up and break the rust off, but I had my ACL surgery, so I took a year off. So this is quite the jump to be coming to for my first one in a little over a year, you know? So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. shorter shorter exit and um, and when you stand up there and you look at it it looks really flat it's a it's a, quite a trick on the mind the initial jump was probably the trickiest part of my day just uh, before I actually got to the exit point just feeling like man am I gonna have to walk down off this thing again how's it gonna look? Two, one. All these people most had the same story as the first time they walked to the edge. They turned around and went home and they didn't jump. And so here I am going, all right, like, first time to the edge, here I go. You know, so that was the hardest part for me was first step off the rock. How I knew that was happening is I dropped a visor and normally it never fogs up. And I stood a couple extra beats enough that I started watching the fog. And as funny as it sounds is the creeping up of the fog on my lens, on my shield is what made me go right when I did. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't stand here anymore. I'm not gonna be able to see. Three, two, boom, send it. Flying the gates it was a little tricky on the second two because, you know, John and I, it's our first time jumping here. And so we don't really understand where we can be at what altitude and still make it back to the uh, landing area. So it was an on site kind of thing. It's insane, you know, it's it's getting a little windy. It's a little bumpy. Who's that? Oh, that's John coming. Right on. As soon as you step off the rock, the wing inflates, 
you're at home and then it's and then it's game on so you know from that moment forward it was just pure stoke <laughs> it's pretty sick yeah man that was sick sick <laughs> that was pretty much as epic as it comes really intense it's the winds picked up in this last jump watching the pylon swaying there's no doubt in your mind that it's uh it's turbulent out there when you see something you're going for there's trees in front of it you're like oh, i don't know <laughs> maybe i'll pull up now and uh, come do it another day you know any any sane person would probably retire they should probably go see a psychiatrist or something <laughs> We're here at Skydive Arizona to break the current upright world record. The weather ain't gonna be cooperating, so we just gotta make it happen. We're kind of trying to build this giant formation going against gravity. And there are a lot of little areas where things can go wrong. YouTube, click for the next video, subscribe to Red Ball.